Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It is a good morning. It's 858, and the best thing about today is it's Friday. It's Friday. It's a little warm today. I know. We'll get to that in a second. I know. Justin Horn's got your, got your weather forecast. He's going to be talking about that hurricane headed for the Gulf Coast of Louisiana, too. But first, you know, a lot of businesses are struggling these days. A lot of uh, CEOs and marketing people sitting there on their Zoom calls trying to figure out how in the world are we going to make money and stay afloat? People are getting very creative, like yep. one theme park in western Tokyo in the suburbs is taking the t that's really hit hard by the tourism industry and they are selling day passes to people looking for a more interesting place to work from home. You can get a amusement workstation. You can actually get a workstation at the amusement park from October 15th. That's when they're going to start. It'll cost you just 1900 yen, which is $18. Now, if you hope, well, I was, you know, I was gonna let people at home figure that out. <laughs> 3,600 yen for a pair of guests can set themselves up. You can work by poolside. You can have that kind of workstation. You get a table, you get chairs, you get an office, you get a deck, and you get Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi outlets. But most importantly, you get to work from a Ferris wheel. So that's, that's part of the package. You can spend up to one hour working from inside the Ferris wheel, which also, of course, has Wi-Fi. Could you see yourself working in a Ferris wheel? On a Zoom, like a Zoom call on a Ferris wheel, that'd be kind of I cool. just don't even think I can pay attention to the S Zoom call. So then after you're done with your work day, you get to go enjoy some of the uh, rides and some of the activities like laser tag, botanical garden, haunted house, go-karts. They've got a roller coaster called the Bandit. You got to pay extra. So your 1,900 yen, got to, you got to get more yen if you're going to go. But here's the thing about the roller coaster. Due to social distancing and COVID-19 and all the uh, measures they're taking to try to keep everybody safe, you can't scream. On the roller coaster, roller coaster. You can't scream. Scream inside your heart. Here's today's 9 at 9. What? Hurricane Delta expected to make landfall on the Gulf Coast this afternoon. We are reeling from what Laura did to us. And so to have this hit right now is, uh, is really tough. Military City USA is playing a role in tracking Delta. The hurricane hunters have moved their operations to Joint Base San Antonio Lackland for a few days. President Trump's physician says he expects the president to resume public engagements Saturday. The White House released a memo from Dr. Sean Connolly that says President Trump has finished his course of therapy for COVID-19. 13 people are facing charges for an alleged plot that included the kidnapping or even killing of Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. They talk about showing up at her house, ringing the doorbell and just shooting her if she answers the door. Any ISD police and SAPD are investigating after a man tried to lure a Johnson High School student into his truck at a bus stop. It happened Wednesday near Caliza and Encino View. A 17-year-old accused of killing two protesters and injuring a third days after Jacob Blake was shot by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin, is due back in court today. The attorneys at Kyle Wittenhouse are hoping to send him from Illinois to Wisconsin to stand trial on homicide charges. The Department of Justice is suing Yale University for alleged illegal discrimination. The lawsuit says the university discriminated against Asian American and white students. The United Nations World Food Program has won the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize for its efforts to combat hunger and food insecurity around the globe. The organization provided assistance to almost 100 million people in 88 countries last year. The Los Angeles Lakers can clinch their record-tying 17th NBA championship tonight if they can defeat the Miami Heat in Game 5 of the NBA Finals. You can watch the game live right here on KSAT at 8 o'clock. And that's today's 9 at 9. It's, it's kind of one of those things whenever you see LeBron, I do it all the time. I have to remind people, he will still not have five rings even if he wins tonight. It's so hard Tim as Duncan a, as a Spurs fan to watch other teams, you know. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> he still hard. won't have five rings. The man has spoken. Let's take a look outside <laughs> at left live cam. 72 degrees, Justin. Yuck. Yeah, it's, it's, it's warm and humid this morning. We've got a deck of clouds starting to move in, so it's going to be cloudy at least for a time this morning. We'll see a little bit of sun this afternoon. There could be a shower today. Chances are 
we're just not going to see much. That hurricane is too far to our east. Right now, 72 degrees. Northerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. That dew point all the way up there at 69. So, yes, it is sticky out there. We'll top out at close to 88 today. Pretty similar to where we've been the last few days. There will be a few rain chances mixed in there, uh, but mainly east of I-35. Let's look at the satellite picture. You can see the clouds sort of increasing just within the last hour or so. And they'll thicken up a little bit, looks like this morning. Uh, and there's a look at Hurricane Delta, which is uh, still off the coast of Louisiana. Category 3 hurricane should weaken a little bit before it makes landfall, but this is still going to be a huge, huge problem. Still a lot of rain for far southeast Texas and a large portion of Louisiana. We're going to get the, the details on Delta and talk about our weekend forecast, which changes quite a bit. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Outside with traffic cam, Ooh, there's a little problem. Looks like more construction than anything over there, Loop 410 in Calabria. Crowded roads this morning, but right now everything seems to be moving at a nice clip. Some top stories we are following today. A job interview has proved to be a painful experience for a far west side man. San Antonio police say he was told that he was shot after two other men offered him work. It happened around 1030 last night at a home in the 1300 block of Bayou Drive, not far from Marbach and Loop 410. Police tell us the man was offered a job in construction and that somehow turned into an argument and then a physical fight. The victim says he saw one of the men reaching into his pocket, so he tried to run away. He says he heard gunshots and then he realized later on that he had been grazed on his leg. Paramedics were able to treat his wound on scene. Police are still looking for two suspects. Police are also investigating another shooting where they believe the victim may actually be the suspect. Officers say the man was assaulting two people when a third person intervened and shot him in the leg. It happened just before 11 last night in the 100 block of Yale, not far from Culebra and Fredericksburg. When officers arrived, they say the three people involved were trying to drive away but were stopped and detained. Police say the man who was shot was lying on the front porch and was taken to University Hospital. The case is still under investigation and right now no charges have been filed. A woman is in custody this morning after the Bear County Sheriff's Office says she stabbed her boyfriend during an argument. The good news, the BCSO says that man is expected to recover. It happened around 5 this morning at a home in the 3400 block of Altius Pass in West Bear County. Deputies tell us the pair were fighting when the woman stabbed the man in the chest. Right now, we're still waiting to learn the woman's name and what charges she'll be facing. And once again, a monster storm is taking aim at the Gulf Coast. As we mentioned at the 9 at 9, Hurricane Delta gaining strength and is expected to make landfall today as a Category 2 or 3 storm. CNN's Daryl Forges is in Lake Charles, Louisiana, where people are still in cleanup mode after the last major storm from just a few weeks ago. Hurricane Delta slowly but surely making its way towards southwest Louisiana and its path Lake Charles, Louisiana. Now, if you remember six weeks ago, Lake Charles was struck by Hurricane Laura, causing a lot of significant damage. And now for the people yet again here in Lake Charles, they're bracing for the worst. This is a very unprecedented situation that we're dealing with. Just six weeks since taking a direct hit from Hurricane Laura. The effect from what happened from last storm and coming to this storm, I don't think we're gonna have nothing left. Louisiana residents are bracing yet again. Now landfall is, is forecasted in almost exactly the same area as landfall occurred with Hurricane Laura. After slamming into the Yucatan Peninsula on Wednesday, Hurricane Delta is intensifying and aiming for the Gulf Coast. It's scary to see uh, what we're seeing uh, on the radar right now, and it truly almost is, um, I suppose it would be unbelievable if we hadn't been through 2020 already. Forecasters are predicting hurricane force winds along with a storm surge that could be as high as 11 feet in some places, impacting those on the coast and further inland. Because storm surge will actually back up into the area rivers and waterways and hurricane warnings and watches are in place all along the Gulf Coast. Officials pleading with storm weary residents to evacuate. I can tell you that uh, we as uh, city employees are going to move heaven and earth and leave no stone unturned to get people out of Lake Charles. But for many Louisianans facing down the fourth main storm to strike the state this year, there may be no going back this time around. It's no going home. Only thing I could do is put it in the good Lord's hand. 
Now the Lake Charles mayor says that more people evacuated for this hurricane compared to six weeks ago during Hurricane Laura. The main reason not just because of the life threatening storm surge, but also because of what you're seeing behind me. A lot of debris that was picked up from Hurricane Laura six weeks ago. And so if you mix that with the heavy wind gusts we could see later on today as high as 90, even 100, 120 miles per hour, seeing that flying around all throughout the city will cause a big issue throughout the day. In Lake Charles, Louisiana, I'm Daryl Fortress. Yeah, continued prayers for those folks out there in Louisiana. It is 908, 72 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, Metro Health has just released some guidelines for celebrating Halloween in San Antonio. Our Eric and Hernandez joins us to break them down. And cities all over the country are coming up with programs to help people get back on their feet amid the pandemic. But what about veterans? Mac Massey tells us about a special program trying to make sure veterans find jobs. That's later on on the News at 9. Major renovations at an Eastside gym are complete. We're talking about the Redberry Mansion, now the Redberry Estate. Just ahead here on GMSA at 9, a closer look at the space full of luxury and available for events of all occasions. Stick around. It's 912. Welcome back. An East Side Gym is back in business and open for families to make memories. Two ballrooms, a speakeasy bar, and even lakeside views. The Red Berry Estates, a mansion built back in the 1950s, have got a makeover to create one of a kind venue for your perfect event. Arlesia Bonetta was at the estate and takes us on the grand tour. It was originally built in 1951 by Virgil Edward Redberry. In 2012, uh, the city purchased it and we uh, took over the renovations in 2019. The RK Group worked with a team of architects, contractors, engineers, interior designers, and even a historical consultant to bring the Redberry estate back to life and grander than ever before. We wanted to make sure that we caught that era of opulence. Uh, so you see the gold touches, you see in every little light fixture and every other, uh, the wallpaper has gold leafing in it. The original two bedroom, three car garage mansion was gutted to create an open concept with touches of elegance and history throughout the 15,000 square foot estate. So the three levels, we start at the very top level as our chateau level. We have a bridal suite in a uh, groom's den and also a parlor. So then our next level is our main ballroom or the mansion ballroom uh, where we can sit about 200 people. Then there's a third level that pays homage to the original owner, Virgil Edward Redberry, a Texas politician known for horse racing and gambling. Our speakeasy style swanky casino level. So we will have gaming tables. It's a bar, a lounge. It's a very, very swanky feel to it. And in true speakeasy style. And keeping up with that whole theme of um, the casino and the speakeasy style, we have a hidden bookcase that you can now use as storage or, or a place to prep. Step out from the mansion to take a look at the new addition. A lakeside ballroom with a terrace that together seat around 600 people and offer a view unlike any other in San Antonio. So we have a beautiful, beautiful little Duffy boat there and it's an electric boat that will uh, be able to carry you across the lake, the 12 acre lake, uh, bring you all the way across in uh, grand style, whether you're a CEO or whether you're a bride and you want an amazing new entrance or a fantastic send off. A fantastic send off indeed on a boat and that's where we are today and a fun fact about the lake historians say that on this property on this lake Redberry kept his horses on property and would run them through the water making laps around the lake for exercise you guys what a beautiful view to get to enjoy this morning what do y'all think that's an awesome Beautiful. place. Absolutely. Completely incredible. hidden. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of wedding plans for that place made there. So are they already starting to book for weddings and other events? Absolutely. They're already taking bookings. And of course, this isn't just for weddings, for galas, for fundraisers, uh, for any party event of all occasions that your family may need. And this boat makes it very romantic. So they're also talking about hoping for proposals. So how special and romantic would that be, you guys? No one get any ideas, though. How about a, uh, <laughs> what about a fishing trip? I mean, it is a lake and a boat. 
That is not romantic. <laughs> David. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> I don't know. He completely missed. There might be a big bass in that lake. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Alicia, it looks beautiful out there. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It is very nice. So. Thank you, Alicia. It's kind of a hidden gym. It is. I mean, we were talking about it. You can't see it from the, the street at all. In the heart of the east side. A little casting. A little Oh my gosh. Well, today might be a good day to go fishing. It's warm <laughs> sure, enough. Sure, why not? See? It's warm enough. A great day. Yeah, it is warm enough. It, it's plenty warm out there. And guys, of course, we're watching the latest with Delta. It, it's going to be another big storm. It's going to mark the 10th uh, land falling name storm this year, which would be a record. 2020. Man, it just mm -hmm. keeps going. The hits keep coming. Uh, let's first start with the time lapse here over San Antonio. We had some clear skies earlier, they've now clouded up. And then we're going to see some of these clouds for the next couple of hours. 72 degrees. Dew point is at 69. Northerly wind at about 8 miles per hour. It's plenty humid out there. It's going to be sticky through much of today. We have some of that moisture starting to work in our direction. Uh, at least humidity, not necessarily rainfall, unfortunately. But you see the clouds here around Bear County really starting to move in. Temperature 72 at the airport, 73 Randolph, 76 in New Braunfels, and 70 right now at Bernie Stage. We've got clear skies out to the west, 71 right now in Uvalde. Uh, 77 Victoria, 77 in Gonzales. Dew points today, as I mentioned, are going to stay relatively high. So we're talking up around the 70 degree mark. That's sticky air. So it will be somewhat humid uh, even into the evening hours. Now by tonight and as we get into tomorrow, those dew points will start to fall off and we'll get some drier air tomorrow. So it'll feel a little bit better. Uh, that hurricane is starting to produce some pretty heavy rain already around Lake Charles, even Houston getting in on some of the rain. Places like Beaumont, Port Arthur, they're going to get quite a bit of rain out of this. It's just uh, almost stopping right at I-45. So any rain for us, uh, if we see anything at all, it's going to be very light. Doesn't look like we're going to get much out of this. And you can see it's still uh, structured pretty nicely here. Uh, winds right now are at 120 miles per hour, gusting to 150. Still a category three storms moving north at about 12 miles per hour. Now what you'll notice is this thing's going to kind of take a right turn here. Should weaken a little bit because the waters are cooler right there along the coast. Winds at 110 miles per hour by one o'clock today. And then we think landfall will be sometime around five or six o'clock this evening is a category two storm. These colors you see here, this is the wind radii. So these are tropical storm force winds that extend out quite a ways. But the hurricane force winds, it's a small area around Cameron, maybe, maybe up to Lake Charles, but this is the same area that got hit by Laura, of course. So uh, not a good situation there. And it will quickly weaken as it moves farther inland. Let's take a look at some of the forecast wind gusts here. And places like Lake Charles could see gusts up to 81 miles per hour by this evening, if not a little bit higher. And then uh, this will quickly move off to the north. We'll see some pretty big wind gusts even across central parts of Louisiana and even northern Louisiana. Parts of Arkansas will get some good gusts and heavy rain out of this. We're talking uh, four to six inches. Uh, maybe even higher than that. There could be some isolated spots, maybe 10 inches. In places like Beaumont, 3 to 5 inches. Houston, 1 to 2 inches, especially on the east side of town. And then you go west of that, there's just not much rain at all. This model does show a couple showers developing today. We can't rule it out, but it just doesn't seem likely. And anything we see is going to be pretty brief and light. Uh, by tomorrow, as I mentioned, the clouds get out of here. We may start with some clouds tomorrow morning, but uh, tomorrow afternoon, it'll be sunny. And those temperatures will really ramp up. Take a look at the high temperature on Saturday, 95. We'll see some upper 90s out west, maybe 100 in Del Rio. And then Sunday, boy, we're really going to be baking. 99 here in San Antonio. We're going 98, 99, but triple digits for Hondo, Pleasanton, Uvalde, Del Rio. Records possible this weekend. Uh, so it is going to be very, very toasty. 82 degrees noontime today, 87 by 4 o'clock. We'll top out at 88. We'll call it partly cloudy here in San Antonio. More clouds off to the east, less clouds off to the west. And we'll go 95 tomorrow, 98 on Sunday, which would beat the record by 2 degrees. And 95 Monday, a little cooler Tuesday, Tuesday Wednesday, and the Thursday behind a, a weak frontal boundary. But still, no rain in the forecast. Okay, we got to do a junior meteorologist, right. too. We can't forget about this. Emilio is doing it this morning. He's age 6, first grade, terrific meteorologist. Take a listen. And today we're going to see what the weather is. On Monday is going to be sunny, so you can wear whatever you want. On Friday is going to be cloudy, 
So the Danny YouTuber is stopping warm. They're nice. And in the evening, it's going to be sunny. And on the weather for Friday, it's going to be a, the low of 87 yeah. and the high of 97. Well, thanks for watching this. Justin, you need to start <laughs> giving forecasts. By the way, okay, so you can wear this today. Yeah. And you can wear that. I, I love that. It's very you know what? specific. It's, it's good information. It really is. Uh, he's got all the data there behind him. Well, and he had an audience in the studio, apparently. I, yeah, I, little sister. Maybe a sibling there in the background. <laughs> yeah, little sister. Good Ooh. job, Emilio. <laughs> oh, great job. Thank you so much. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, we are just about three weeks away from Halloween. So how will San Antonio be able to celebrate? Eric Hernandez joins us to break down the guidelines Metro Health released. Coming up next. Halloween is not canceled in San Antonio, but Metro Health has released some guidelines for Halloween and trick or treating. Our Eric Hernandez is joining us live in studio with precautions parents need to take. Hey guys, good morning. Good well, morning. on Wednesday, Mayor Ron Nuremberg released these guidelines from Metro Health for residents on how to party, trick-or-treat, or hand out candy safely. First, let's talk about trick-or-treating. You want to maintain the six feet distance from other parties, limit the size of your own group to only household members, don't go into other people's homes, and only consume prepackaged treats. Also, bring hand sanitizer and use it often. Now, if you are passing out candy, Metro Health says, only do so if you are feeling well and you should do it away from your home, such as the driveway or edge of the yard. Candy can be placed on a disinfected table in a grab and go fashion. Now, if you're having a party, it's best to keep it outdoors and small. Also, party goers should avoid indoor gatherings with shared beverages like a punch bowl or a buffet style setting. The mayor did say in a news release that if we continue to work together to stop the spread of COVID-19, our community will be able to safely enjoy Halloween and other holidays later this year. Now, one more thing to note for Metro Health is that the Halloween mask should not be taken the place of a face covering. So more on these guidelines, just head to our website, KSAT.com. David, Sarah. Good information, good yes. to know, but the only question really now is, is candy corn involved? I hope not. Yeah, it's it's his favorite candy. What? It's real weird. Yeah. How can, you, how can you not like candy corn at Halloween? Because it's just it hurts it, your teeth. It's not a good candy. More for me. <laughs> you can have it all. You guys, just leave it alone. <laughs> There's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. NASA is tracking how much carbon monoxide the wildfires on the West Coast are producing. Katie Blake explains why this is important in today's Climate Minute. They are said to represent the souls of lost loved ones. Thousands of monarch butterflies appear in Mexico every year around the Day of the Dead. Isis Romero visited Mexico to find out more. And millions of Americans are unemployed, and that includes people right here in the Alamo City. So how a local program is helping veterans find work is coming up. Got that for you in a few minutes. Well, during this pandemic, millions of Americans have lost their jobs and can't find employment. Cities around the country have programs to help people get back on their feet. But what about veterans? As Max Massey shows us, a special program called Warriors to Work has a mission to make sure veterans find jobs. Less than 1% of the population here in the United States do serve. So I'm happy to be among um, those who have given their time and energy to um, a life of service. Charnel Chin served with the U.S. Navy, and after her service, she moved to San Antonio. I had went back to school to finish my master's with St. Mary's here um, in San Antonio. And so at the end of that, that was quite scary for me, especially with the pandemic. Charnel's job offer was revoked. I reached out to the Warriors to Work program through Wounded Warrior Project, and they have a lot of connections with employers. They provide job coaching, networking skills, especially during the pandemic. They're hosting a lot of um, virtual information sessions with employers. Warriors to Work has been around for about 13 years. They average getting about 2,000 veterans jobs every year. We're actually finding that there are many key employers that we've built relationships with that are still willing to hire and are hiring. We've actually put, since the, about mid-March, we've put over 800 warriors and their families to work. 
resulting in about $40 million worth of uh, salaries. The program works with any post 9-11 veteran and their families to help find civilian employment, whether they're looking to change positions or just find a new job in general. People that are ready to work, that, that's it. We're, we're really here for everybody. And through the Warriors to Work project, Charnel was able to land an interview with Amazon where she is now employed. And she has some advice for any veterans who are looking for a job. To veterans and family members of veterans, you are not alone and all hope is not lost. Help is available through the Wounded Warrior Project and their Warriors to Work program. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. You know, we have been seeing video and we've been hearing a lot about those wildfires on the West Coast this year. But in today's Climate Minute, Katie Blake is going to show us the fires from a different vantage point. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, you guys. Yeah, slightly different view of the effects that those fires are having. Uh, what you're going to see behind me is actually data from a NASA satellite. Here it is. This represents carbon monoxide concentrations across parts of the Western Hemisphere from about the first full week of September. The red and orange, that's what you need to keep your eye on. That represents abnormally high concentrations of carbon monoxide. So keep your eyes on those colors. So what does this have to do with the fires? Well, well, all fires produce some amount of carbon monoxide. A very large fire, like the wildfires on the West Coast, will give off a lot of carbon monoxide. Further evidence of this is another area of high concentrations of carbon monoxide, the Amazon in South America. So down there, kind of uh, on the bottom part of the globe, that's South America, the Amazon. They are dealing with their own fire. So you'll see kind of similar red and uh, orange colors there. So why is this bad news and what does it have to do with with the climate and climate change. Well, first off, carbon monoxide concentrations being viewed here are too far up in the atmosphere to cause direct carbon monoxide poisoning to people on the ground. So that is good news. However, air quality can be affected. It can take a little bit of a hit when you've got uh, such high concentrations of carbon monoxide. But what is more concerning, the long-term implications. More carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will produce more greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane. More greenhouse gases leads to increased global temperatures, and that is a facet of climate change. So unfortunately, these fires and all the carbon monoxide that it's giving off could in turn uh, result in climate change issues down the line. So just kind of interesting to see the fires from a different vantage point there from way, way up. And I know earlier you were you were talking a little bit about uh, the air quality. Mm -hmm. We've actually seen some of that smoke here in the state of Texas. Yeah, that smoke has traveled all across the United States and and that can affect air quality. Typically, it's not too bad. And here it hasn't been so bad that there were air quality alerts or anything like that. But on the West Coast, California, all the way up to Washington, oh. their air quality was was quite poor uh, because of that smoke. So, yeah, anyways, that's your climate minute for this Friday, guys. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. And taking a look outside with live cam. You know, I think that's just the camera lens. I think, and we also have in our mind, we're talking about like air quality. Justin, yeah. our air quality is not, or actually yesterday was an ozone action day. Uh, two days ago, it, it, and it's actually okay. The air quality is okay today. It looks kind of hazy out there, but it's it's all right. It's mostly just humidity, some low clouds that we're seeing there off in the distance. And it's gonna be a humid start. We're gonna see the clouds for a time this morning and then probably get some sun this afternoon. One thing that we're all dealing with though, ragweed doesn't want to give up. It's in the moderate category. You want to talk about consistency. Uh, it's been in a moderate category, it feels like now for a week. It's been either moderate or high for almost a month now, but uh, we are in the heart of ragweed season, so just a heads up there. 72 Comfort, 73 Tarpley, 74 Stinson, 73 Randolph, 76 in New Braunfels. A mild start, and there you see all the cloud cover really starting to thicken up some, so we'll be stuck with this for another couple of hours. And as you zoom out some, all the rain is out there around Houston and points off to the east. So any chance of rain we have today is really small. Probably if we're going to get any, it'll be across our eastern counties. But we'll keep an eye on the radar. Some very hot temperatures this week, and we could be breaking not one, but a couple records. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. San Antonio gets ready to celebrate Day of the Dead. We're taking a look at some of the elements and the symbols of Dia de los Muertos. One of those symbols is the beautiful monarch butterfly. These butterflies, or mariposas in Spanish, are said to represent the souls of lost loved ones and appear in Mexico every year 
around the Day of the Dead. Our Isis Romero went to the village of Macheros, Mexico, home to millions of monarchs. Located about two hours west of Mexico City is an area surrounded by mountains and trees, home to the beautiful monarch butterflies that take up residence here each year. Of the many areas of the reserve, Cerro Pelon is considered to be among the best places to see them. This is the place where the monarch, monarch migration was confirmed, um, so it's the original sanctuary. It's the least developed and the most pristine and I think the most beautiful. Ellen Sharp and her husband Joel run a B&B in the village of Macheros at the entrance of Cerro Pelon. On this February day, they're taking a group of mostly Canadians and Americans to a remote area of the reserve. In fact, the best way to access it is on horseback. The closer we get to the top of the mountain, the more and more butterflies you begin to see. And the best way I can describe it is like snow. The butterflies are just coming out of the sky from every direction, and it truly is a sight to behold. The monarchs, which are said to represent the souls of the deceased, migrate from Canada. Their arrival at this specific spot, beginning every day of the dead, said to be a bit of a mystery. Why did the butterflies come here? Uh, well, nobody knows, I think. Uh, but I think they're trying to escape the winter in the United States and Canada, so that's why they come here. For those who have traveled here from other countries, seeing them in person is an unforgettable experience. Yeah, it's one of the sort of wonders of the world, you know, there's the so-called whatever, seven wonders of the world. This has to be replacing a couple of those because it's these living critters that are so amazing, beautiful, elegant, and what they do is just amazing. I think it gives me hope, you know, with there's <laughs> yeah. so many dire things going yeah. on with our climate and, and to see this going on, it makes you feel that somehow we're going to get past it and it's going to be okay. Isis Romero, KSAT 12 News. And coming up today on the News at Noon, we're going to tell you about Texas's role in the monarch's migration and how you can help ensure their survival. And don't forget, KSAT will be presenting a special two-hour Day of the Dead virtual event. It'll be from 8 to 10 p.m. on Friday, October 30th. It is now 939 and 74 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. From high school football all the way to the NFL, there's a lot of games to watch this weekend. RJ Marquez gives us a preview coming up next. We have another big week coming up on the gridiron. Let's start with the big game in this week's big game coverage. It features the undefeated Smithson Valley Rangers against the Wagner Thunderbirds. This will be Wagner's first game of the season thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic and what a way to start against a district power. Wagner made the move up to 6A this year after realignment. They made the state semifinals in 5A in back-to-back -back seasons. For Smithson Valley, they already have two big wins on their season schedule. Big wins over Colleen Harker Heights and then last week against Madison. Kickoff will be at Rutledge Stadium at 7.30. Another big game this week features the Judson Rockets facing off against the New Braunfels Unicorns in New Braunfels. The Rockets are coming off a rare shutout loss to DeSoto, 37-0 on the road last week. The Unicorns, one of the best nicknames in the state of Texas, are 2-0 and looking to make some noise in this very tough district. Kickoff here is also at 7.30. Make sure to follow KSAT's big game coverage online and social media for the latest scores and highlights with high school football. All right, moving on to college. Tomorrow is one of the most anticipated games of the season. Texas and Oklahoma in the Red River rivalry game at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The Horns have dropped to 22nd in the latest rankings following their loss to TCU last week. But the Sooners are not ranked. How's that, how weird is that to say that they're not ranked? Following season opening losses to Iowa State and Kansas State, this could be the final Red River rivalry game for Texas quarterback Sam Ellinger. Should be a good one. Kickoff in Dallas will be at 11 a.m. All right, now to the NFL, where we're talking Cowboys. Yes, painfully, the Dallas defense has come under major scrutiny and pressure, and only four games into the season, they have already given up 36 and a half points per game in their first four games and are one in three to start the year. The the defense was absolutely awful last week, falling to Cleveland 49 to 38. Now get this, they host the winless Giants in a must-win game at AT&T Stadium 
Got to win this one, Cowboys. That game kicks off Sunday at 325. And let's not forget about the winless Houston Texans. They host the Jaguars this week at Energy Stadium. It's been an interesting week for Houston. They fired head coach and general manager Bill O'Brien after an awful 0-4 start to their season. Houston says they're looking at the season with a new attitude and feel that they could still make some noise in the AFC South. The Jaguars are 1-3 to start the season. Kickoff there is at noon for Sunday. All right, so for the latest sports coverage this weekend, check out all the highlights on air on Instant Replay and, of course, the stories online at KSAT.com. All right, Justin, we're going to have to have a little chat with RJ. He's upset. He left off Texas Tech and he left off the Aggies. He sure did. We got a big game tomorrow. Yeah. It's Florida. I don't know. Texas teams are just. It was a bad weekend last weekend. We're going to turn it around. Turn it around this weekend. Will I'm this, feeling good. Will this weather turn our spirits around? Uh, it's going to be hot this weekend. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be a good weekend to stay indoors and watch football. Uh, we're expecting some records possibly on Sunday. Let's first go outside for you, show you that we got 74 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. Northerly wind at about 12 miles per hour. Wind could be a little bit breezy today with that hurricane. Uh, just off the coast there, off the coast of Texas and Louisiana. Humidity at 85%. We're not seeing any wind gusts right now. See the cloud cover. It's trying to thin out a little bit there on the uh, west side of San Antonio, but still some thicker clouds for most of eastern Bear County. And we'll see some on and off clouds here in the next couple of hours. 70 degrees right now, Bernie State, 76 in New Braunfels. You got clear skies as you go west. So places like Uvalde, Creso Springs, you're looking at sunny skies right now and temperatures in the mid 60s. And then uh, some thinning clouds also out around Gonzales and Victoria this morning. Dew points are awful high. These are the highest we've seen them in some time now. So they've jumped up to near 70. This is that realm where you can feel it. So uh, dew point of 72 in Gonzales, pretty sticky. Uh, it'll be pretty sticky through most of today, and then things will dry out a little bit tomorrow afternoon. We'll see lower dew points over the weekend, but that's also going to contribute to some higher temperatures. Uh, looking at the uh, visible satellite and radar here, you can see where all the rain is. Galveston, Houston over to Lake Charles along I-10 there. It's going to be another rough go of it. Uh, with big time storm surge, strong winds, travel not advised, obviously, through Lake Charles over towards the New Orleans area. And you can see where the eye is of this storm. Still a healthy storm, Category 3. It is expected to weaken. At least the Hurricane Center thinks it will weaken a little bit. Still, we're talking winds 110 miles per hour. That's uh, no joke, for sure. This is going to be a big problem for the Louisiana coast. And these colors here represent tropical storm force winds. That's how far they extend out from the, the center. That's some tropical storm force winds as well. And then a little area of hurricane force winds right underneath the symbol there uh, where winds will be 74 miles per hour plus. That's going to be right around the Cameron area, right around the coast of Louisiana. And then uh, look at that just updated. That's the new update from the hurricane center. Kind of data just jumped in there. See, now that they're thinking it's going to stay a major hurricane. So that's the, that's the change here. Problem is the storm surge is going to be huge and those hurricane force winds pretty close to Lake Charles, an area that got pounded by Laura. This thing will weaken as it uh, moves north pretty quickly, but winds are still going to be over 100 miles per hour as it moves inland. So hurricane warnings in place, Port Arthur over to Morgan City, Louisiana, and look at these storm surges. We're talking 7 to 11 feet. That is going to do some catastrophic damage there right along the coast. And again, these are areas that were already battered by Laura. On top of all that, we're going to get some big time rainfall totals too, six to 10 inches in some cases, one to two inches for places like Houston, Beaumont three to five. But as you go west, completely falls off. We're not looking for much rain here today. This model does show a couple showers. I doubt that we'll see much of anything. And clouds will start to clear out uh, maybe later this evening. We'll see them build back in briefly tomorrow. And then we'll get sunny skies on your Saturday. Temperatures up around 95. We talked about the heat. 90s, if not some triple digits out west tomorrow. And then triple digits look to be a good bet, especially west of San Antonio on Sunday afternoon. We'll be close here in San Antonio. That would be a record. If we did hit 100, it would be the latest we've ever hit 100 here in San Antonio, too. So all sorts of records in jeopardy this weekend. 88 degrees, the high temperature, partly cloudy today. And we'll go at 95 tomorrow, 98 Sunday, 95 Monday with some cooler temperatures by the middle part of next week. We'll be right back. Well, microbes aren't the only unwelcome guest invading the White House. It's also got a vermin problem. Ooh, as CNN's Judy Most reports, one of her colleagues seems to be a favorite target of the masked bandits. Out of control at the White House? No, not just coronavirus, raccoons. 
There's an invasion crawling around the media cables on the White House lawn, sniffing at bags of gear. Is there food in there? Making a beeline for CNN's Joe Johns in the middle of a live shot. Get! There he is. Ah! Now, no events on the president's schedule today. Maybe you think Joe has seen too many movie raccoons. Does someone need a hug? You too might lob a footstool just to scare it. No, no raccoons were harmed in this exercise. If this was your second run-in with a raccoon, just the week yeah. before as Joe was about to go live. I felt something on my leg and the first thing I thought was it was a cameraman from another network and I looked down and it's a raccoon that had just grabbed my leg. Law enforcement is on the hunt, spotlighting them with their flashlights, throwing some sort of sandbag, which the raccoon actually tried to drag away. One ended up in a Secret Service security shack Dogs have joined the search, even broomsticks have been deployed, but like in the movie, the nut job. Not so fast. The raccoons keep coming. Is he still there? Can somebody chase him away? Someone tried to trap them. They have put, put some marshmallows. Some rooted for the raccoons. Cue the raccoon gifts. That White House raccoon even created its own Twitter account, though with raccoon misspelled. Sure. <laughs> Oh, there he goes. Mice have previously invaded the White House, and President Calvin Coolidge's wife had a pet raccoon. But never before have raccoons run amok. In the midst of a pandemic, a White House reporter is often told, Please stay safe. Where's your mommy? <laughs> but unlike other White House occupants, at least the raccoons always wear their masks. Ginny Mose, CNN. Frickin' raccoons, man. God, New York. Again, this is the second time. Oh I my like gosh. I got his own Twitter account. I know. <laughs> Not so cut cute and cuddly, though. You know, they can get a little... They get a little mean every now and then. Who knew Calvin Coolidge's wife had a pet raccoon? I know, that thing was fat, too. It was. <laughs> Spoiled. Wow. Well, speaking of cute and cuddly and all kinds of animals... <laughs> I was just I was just waiting to see the pictures with everybody else. I didn't really <laughs> want to look at these. This is some kind of like contest. It's a photography yeah. contest. It's a it's a, a wildlife comedy. <laughs> He's scratching his butt. It is a wildlife <laughs> photography <laughs> contest. There's 44 images that made it hey, to the finals. When you got an itch, you got to scratch. You know what I'm saying? And right. a panel of judges will choose the top <laughs> images but there's a People's Choice Award that allows the public to vote for their favorite photo. I'm not sure what the giraffe is. The giraffe is like, uh. I feel like these animals are itchy. They're just like scratching. <laughs> He's like trying to take off out of the tree or something. I don't know what. And then this guy. Uh, but if you, got a peanut. If you go to ksat.com, there's some really funny photos. There's like a fish where it's smiling. There's a sea turtle and he's mad. Just, well, just go to ksat.com and you'll see the cute photos. Have a great weekend. Thanks for being with us. What a